Fiona Rounds. I'm here to say, because I saw in the news that there might have been some issue with the housing security funding coming up, roughly $100 million short. I don't claim to have a one-size-fits-all solution, but I do have a pretty novel idea. As you know, silicon production uh, is at a standstill in this country. In Florida, the only county that got the benefit from selling its sand for silicon chip production was Siesta Key. Well, because of the shortage in silicon chips, they've revitalized the process with new Z cathodes that allow river sand, specifically river delta sand, with more than one oxygen molecule attachment to be processed and refined at a lower cost. I think that West Palm Beach should take advantage of that opportunity. My second point today is that Dixie Highway is named after a Confederacy stuff. I would really like it if we didn't have a road named after Confederacy stuff. Number three, and my consigliere is going to speak more to this, but I think we have a problem with the Internal Affairs Department of the West Palm Beach Police Department. We do not feel that they are dutifully inspecting the cases that come before them. Thank you so much for your time, and this is a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Yep. Now, would you state your address for the record, please? Hi, my name is Acura Amanda. I live in West Palm Beach, Florida. And um, I want to bring to, I want to bring awareness before the council this issue I see in our local police department. We are in Law of Enforcement Appreciation Month and nothing says more appreciation than equality and equal treatment. I see a trend in this department West Palm Beach has. The trend speaks volumes when you pull officers IA files. You will see some officers such as the third highest paid officer in the whole department, Sergeant Lowley, who has on his IA consensus over 100 inquiries. He is not only the third highest paid police officer in the department, but he was promoted to sergeant, even though he has a long violent history of excessive force. He was also caught and never charged or fired for the time clock theft after he was caught hiding in a bathroom stall after being seen at the gym working out when he was supposed to be on duty at the Kravis Center. Another trend I see is when a police officer of color makes a complaint against any wrongdoing they face, they are hit with retaliation, um, such as bogus sexual harassment claims that are not investigated properly. Another issue police officers of color have in this department is trying to join the canine force. They are labeled as high liability because of the color of their skin. It is unfair. How can we expect police officers to treat the public equal if they are not treated equal? Former Code Officer Thompson was arrested and fired for shoplifting at the Home Depot, which was rightfully so. He is a Code Officer of color, but Officer McDonald was arrested for Grand Theft Auto and he is still a police officer. These are just a few examples of inequality in this police department. Recently, I filmed two officers in the Renegades parking lot, male and female, Officer Rosario and Officer Medina. They were seen most of the night loafing around, hiding behind vehicles in the parking lot, um, sharing the same insulated thermos. On that same night, they were getting paid $75 an hour by this business owner to do absolutely nothing. The same night a violent viral fight took place in that same parking lot and there were nowhere to be found. After this incident, I placed a public records request for BWC that even showed female officer Medina canceling out a call for this fight, jeopardizing the safety of the officers that were at the scene actually doing their job. I at the time raised concerns to the Lieutenant on duty, but at the time he did not want to hear it. He even denied and lied to my face that he was the Lieutenant on duty. Uh, later, I found out he actually was. I want to have faith in the- Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys.